Let's hear from Bryn Jones. He is a fund manager at Rathbone Unit Trust Management, where he is responsible for £2.6 billion worth of fixed income assets. Bryn, thank you so much for coming on the show. In terms of what we've been hearing from the Fed, I guess they said two essentially, you know, two things. Stimulus is now back on the cards because they had such a vigorous debate about whether we need extra liquidity to be pumped onto uh, the U.S. economy. But they also downgraded their forecast for growth once again. Does it make you more optimist of, about the future, or on the other hand, are you? Much more concerned are you more prudent in terms of how you manage your investments well we saw in Jackson Hole they, they commented that they were going to look at uh, data and it's about data dependent this week's quite a big data week so we've already had very weak consumer uh, confidence and we've obviously got uh, the payrolls and the ISM manufacturing data this week and um, with, with all the data that's come out of the US it's likely that the ISM manufacturing data is going to be quite weak mm -hmm. um, and as a result we think that that's going to throw up a lot of um, uh, uh, speculation in the market about the potential for more QE. Um, in terms of how the, the sort of what form QE is going to take though, um, looking at the rhetoric, we think it's going to be a little bit more focused. Uh, in particular, the two so areas. We're targeting specific. Yeah, two areas. Yeah, one one is obviously unemployment, uh, and the other is, is is the housing market. What we've seen in QE one and QE two so far is them chucking just money at the system, yeah. and it hasn't been filtering through into the areas that's really required. Yeah. So we think they're going to, in some way, use some kind of tool to to, to attack both the housing and and, the, and effectively in in line with uh, politics as well, having to attack uh, unemployment. But we don't exactly know what form that will take yet. President Obama was also saying that he's really focusing next week on on jobs and, and he'll make some announcement yeah. on how to stimulate that. Yeah, so I mean exactly. So I mean my, uh, would, one would suspect that they're going to try and uh, anchor down the long end uh, as well. So they're going to try and flatten the yield curve, uh, keep it very low but actually flatten it even further to make it easier for people to refinance at the longer end of the curve. So Bryn, what does it mean actually for your investment? I mean if an investor comes in the market and says, wow, I'm, I'm in a real panic about what to do, treasuries are still safe? Well, they're, yeah, they're fairly safe. I mean, the thing is, they don't yield you anything. So it's very difficult to justify charging someone a fee um, to, to, to manage something that's yielding you 0.2%, plus you've got inflation on top where your real return is actually negative. Um, but, yeah, I mean, while you've, got, while you've got low real yields, people are, are buying things that, um, that are give, uh, other asset classes. So people yeah. have been buying gold, obviously. Yeah. Um, that doesn't yield but, anything but gold either. gold but... is it an asset bubble because it, we're seeing, you know, we're nearing the 2,000, at least we're nearing the 1,900, then yeah. we retreated mm -hmm. a bit. And a lot of investors say, I really want to be careful of that because this yeah. is a bubble waiting to burst. Possibly. I mean, if you, if you think at the long term, if you, if you do inflation adjust gold, it's actually still below its, um, its, its you know, inflation price. It should be around $2,500 um, if you look at inflation. And you've obviously got other central banks now diversifying away from the dollar, diversifying away from yeah. treasuries. You know, the demand from India and China for gold is just increasing aggressively. So, you know, I wouldn't say gold's necessarily in a bubble. A lot of the fall was actually because of the increase in margin requirements yeah. for, for gold. But, I mean, that's just one asset class. The other thing is obviously, you know, global equities at and probably yield more than, um, than most bonds. In yeah, so bonds, you wouldn't be buying any, any peripheral bonds. I mean, they have a yield of 5 6%, but they're just too risky. Well, potentially, but I mean, if you look at companies like Telecom Italia, which uh, are you know, generating good profits from Brazil, um, you know, people tar uh, Telecom Italia with the fact that it's Italian and therefore they're not buying the debt. You know, okay, they have, a, they have a lot of leverage in that business, but they're actually starting to generate profits from Argentina and Brazil. And so sometimes if you look through these businesses, actually, you know, you can find some cheap assets. And so what else would you, you were talking about equities. Equities at the moment seem much more attractive than what we're seeing in terms of the bond markets. They seem also a lot riskier and a lot more of volatile. Course, yeah. <laughs> of course, but, um, you know, if you can buy perhaps, be, you know, British Telecom is an example. It's, it's, it's five-year bonds at the moment, you know, it, it yields less than the equity and, and you know, perhaps you know, with a big cash flow generative business, um, that to buy some of these good sort of um, dividend yield um, yields, um, that they, you know, they can be quite attractive as so well. On corporate bonds, but Brin, yesterday we just had some break. You know, we just uh, had news that basically there were absolutely no issuance in August. Is that going to continue very um, quickly? Well, t you tend to find in the summer um, August is very low anyway, but um, it normally picks back up in September, October. I think uh, issuers are going to be looking for for windows of opportunity um, while the the markets can slightly broken as it is at the moment, they perhaps won't issue into that. That's, yeah. that's probably the case. All right, Bryn, thank you so much. Bryn thank Jones you. there. Now